This is your USMNT Abroad Midweek update from April 4th to April 7th of 2022. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Filippo and welcome to Tactical Manager TV and welcome to another USMNT Abroad episode where every Monday we update you on how the Yanks did abroad over the weekend and every Friday we update you on how the Yanks did abroad over the midweek and today as I said is a midweek recap. Before we even start, a quick spoiler alert right here. Most of the updates are not good. Yeah, it's not the happiest of the episodes, but look at us. We're here doing the episode regardless, going through the hard times together and the good times together. But hey, at least towards the end of the episode, I will be talking about the CONCACAF Champions League and that Sounders versus New York City FC game was pretty damn good. So I'll address that in this video as well. If you are an MLS or CONCACAF Champions League, you know, fan, even though I'm considered by many an MLS hater. Okay, I'm talking a little bit too much. Make sure to smash that like button. I won't be requesting during the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy these types of videos. We have a lot of World Cup content coming up next week about England, Iran. It'll be lots of fun. Thank you very much. Let's play the intro and let's start with the performance updates. Let's start with the Americans in the Champions League. And the first one I'm going to talk about is Zach Steffen from Manchester City. On Tuesday, Zach Steffen stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes for Manchester City during their 1-0 win over Atletico Madrid for the Champions League quarterfinals. This was the first leg of the quarterfinals and the game was played in England. But man, let's talk about Diego Simeone's 5-5-0 formation. And boy, oh boy, I mean, you got to do what you got to do to get the result. And honestly, Atletico Madrid still has a good chance as they're going to be playing the next match at home and there's no away goal differential. So they definitely do still have a chance. But the reason I want to talk about this is we should start thinking about calling Diego Simeone ball or Simeone ball, as we call it. You know, it should just be considered soccer terrorism at this point. Great coach, but Diego Simeone must be stopped. Now, Christian Pulisic from Chelsea. On Wednesday, Pulisic started and played 64 minutes for Chelsea during their 3-1 home loss to Real Madrid in the Champions League quarterfinals. This was the first leg of the quarterfinals and the game was played in England. Now look, it was not a good game for most of the Chelsea players, including Christian Pulisic. Sure, some will say Pulisic did not get enough service or support. Well, he also didn't provide much service or support to his teammates. Very much different from his performance last year when he faced Real Madrid in the semifinals. And as I said, Chelsea as a whole was not very good in this match besides Kai Havertz. For this match, Pulisic had 42 touches, which is not very low considering he played 64 minutes. He had two shots off target, 78% passing accuracy, won one out of five ground duels, lost the one aerial duel he had, and he lost possession 11 times. Now, on a quick note, completely unrelated to Americans abroad, is the first thing I want to say is Real Madrid are probably through. They're going to knock out Chelsea, the current champions. Benzema has been in a completely different level. Vinicius Jr. has become the pacey left winger that Real Madrid was hoping to get out of it, Eden Hazard, before he ate too many burgers. The back line looks strong. The midfield is experienced and extremely talented. But I do want to talk about how Karim Benzema will likely win the Ballon d'Or if Real Madrid wins the Champions League. He has 37 goals and 13 assists in 36 matches played this season. If Real Madrid wins the Champions League, this is the Ballon d'Or winner for sure. Also, France won the 2018 World Cup without Benzema, and he will play on this edition as long as he's healthy. Scary just to think about it, but they also... Uh, okay, uh, we'll talk about it when the World Cup arrives. There's a lot of World Cup videos coming out next week, so I have that on my head all the time. Okay, those were the players that were in the Champions League. Now let's talk about the Americans in the Europa League. Starting with Tyler Adams from RB Leipzig. Tyler Adams was not available. He's still out from the knee injury he suffered against Costa Rica. And it's been reported that it's a minor injury, so he should be back soon. Regardless, I don't expect Tyler's minutes to be very high for the remainder of the season. He is a player that most certainly needs to seek a transfer to a lesser club and be a consistent starter at the sixth position. That's just my opinion. By lesser club, I don't mean move to a lesser league. He can stay in Bundesliga, a top five league. But RB Leipzig is a team that fights for the title of Bundesliga or to a very minimum for a Champions League spot. Maybe Tyler needs to move down a little bit 
and actually be a lock-in starter. That is kind of important. Next up is Serginho Dest from Barcelona. And I'll also talk about the transfer rumors with Serginho Dest. So Dest is still injured and was not available for Barcelona as they tied 1-1 with Eintracht Frankfurt in Germany for the first leg, putting themselves in a strong position to advance to the semifinals. Now, there's a lot of transfer rumors going on for Serginho Dest for the summer transfer window. There are some rumors of Dest maybe going to Leeds United. There was also rumors of a deal involved in a transfer to Bayern that would lead to Lewandowski going to Barcelona. You know, so essentially Barcelona would give Serginho Dest and debt. Oh, sorry. I said debt. I meant cash, money. Which, when it comes to Barcelona, money means debt. And I mean, debt is awesome when you don't have to pay it. Right, Barcelona? But those transfer rumors with Serginho Dest are similar to what we've seen in the end of 2021, and he ended up staying in January regardless, and Xavi even has complimented Dest a lot before he got injured, and was even giving him a lot of minutes. So I personally think Serginho Dest is going to stay in Barcelona, but with this club, you never know, right? This club should have gone bankrupt by now, but you know, when you can just keep going into debt and never pay it, <laughs> you're fine. The last American in Europa League is James Sands from Rangers. On Thursday, James Sands stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes for Rangers during their 1-0 away loss to Sporting Braga. Still have good odds of advancing to the semifinals, but they will need a strong performance in Scotland to advance. Braga is a very strong team just behind Porto, Sporting and Benfica at Portugal. So essentially the fourth strongest team in Liga NOS. Now let's go to the Americans in the Europa Conference League. As I always say, that's essentially the third division of the Champions League. Champions League, Europa League, Europa Conference League. And let's start with Conrad de la Fuente and bad news. Conrad de la Fuente's season has come to an end. He had some cartilage damage on his knee and will undergo surgery, which seems like it'll keep him out just for four weeks. But Sampaoli, their current coach, pretty much said Conrad's season is over. This was technically Conrad de la Fuente's first professional season in the top five league. Lots of moments showing his sparks of talent but there's a lot of work to be done he needs to improve in the final decision in the final third better crossing better finishing and decision making of course as many reported apparently professionalism has to be improved as well nonetheless to say he showed that he's talented let's hope he can have a breakout season within the next two years the last american in the europa conference league that i want to talk about is richie ledesma from psv on Thursday, Ledesma stayed on the bench for PSV during the full 90 minutes for their 0-0 draw with Leicester. The game was played in England, so that was a pretty good result for PSV if you ask me. Ledesma has been impressive when he gets minutes for young PSV. However, for PSV, he has barely played since he returned from an ACL injury. He's played a total of 9 minutes since his return in late 2021 for PSV. He did get more minutes in games for young PSV, which is essentially their B team. And yeah, I'm not talking about Cole Bassett. He's also in the Europa Conference League, but he wasn't even on the bench for Feyenoord during the midweek on Thursday. Now let's go to the players that were not playing in the continental competitions, at least not in the European continental competitions, because we're going to get to South America very soon. Let's start with Europe still. We're going to stay now going to England and talk about Ethan Horvath from Nottingham Forest. And bad news again. It's official. Ethan Horvath is benched once again. On Wednesday, Horvath stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes for Nottingham Forest during their 2-0 win over Coventry in the English Championship. Bryce Samba got a clean sheet and had a good game. Over the weekend, I mentioned I thought Ethan Horvath had lost his starting job due to going to the U.S. Men's National Team camp to sit on the bench while Samba stayed in training and impressed. Well, Samba got a chance over the weekend and he did well. And he got again this week and he did well again. So he is the starter once again. So Ethan Horvath will likely be the backup goalkeeper till this season ends unless Samba gets injured or suspended. Hopefully he doesn't get injured, but if he gets suspended once again, maybe Horvath could get an opportunity. But just to make one thing clear and jokes aside, we can't blame Greg Berhalter for Horvath losing his starting job. Greg has to call up the best options and Ethan Horvath is one of the best three goalkeepers we have. Sure, you can argue that maybe he should have started Ethan Horvath one game or two during camp over Zach Steffen, but that's not the reason Horvath lost his job or the starting job at Nothing Enforced. Also, with Turner injured and Steffen injury prone, you could not leave Ethan Horvath out of our camp. And again, I usually don't defend Greg. I never go out of my way to protect Greg, but come on. <laughs> Blaming Greg Berhalter for Ethan Horvath losing the starting job at Nothing Enforced is nonsense. That's 
nothing to do with Greg Berhalter. Now, staying in England, let's talk about Anthony Robinson, Tim Ream, and Fullerton Balogun because Fulham and Middlesbrough faced each other. On Wednesday, Tim Ream started and went the full 90 minutes for Fulham, while Jedi Robinson started off on the bench and came in at the 82nd minute for Fulham during their 1-0 win over Middlesbrough. For the same game, Fullerton Balogun, the dual national British American, stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes for Middlesbrough. Next up, now in Germany, Ricardo Pepe from Augsburg. On Wednesday, Pepe started off on the bench and came in at the 71st minute for Augsburg during their 2-1 win over Mainz in Bundesliga. This was a match that was postponed a few weeks ago. Augsburg now sits in a semi-comfortable situation towards escaping relegation, six points clear from the relegation zone with six games to play. Considering the teams down on the table don't get many points, six points is a pretty big gap. Now, Augsburg does face Bayern Munich over the weekend. Pepe has yet to score in Bundesliga, and you know, L3 fans are starting to compare him to Diego Linus. So, maybe Pepe scores against Bayern over the weekend? Okay, <laughs> maybe not, but give him more time. Linus has been around for, what, two seasons already at Real Betis and hasn't scored? Pepe will get a goal this season. I can assure you, that will happen. There's six games left, and it will happen. You can even clip this part in the video if he doesn't and make fun of me in two months. Now let's go to South America and let's start with Johnny Cardoso from Internacional. On Wednesday, Johnny started off on the bench and came in at the 88th minute for Internacional during their 2-2 draw with Nove de Octubre in the Copa Sudamericana, which is essentially the Europa League of South America, right? The Libertadores is the Champions League, Copa Sudamericana is the Europa League. Now, we also had another American in the Copa Sudamericana, and that is Alan Sonora from Independiente. On Tuesday, Alan Sonora started and played 16 minutes for Independiente during their 2-1 away loss to Ceará in the Copa Sudamericana. Now, he was not subbed off early due to an injury. I mean, he only played 16 minutes starting, but it's not because he got injured. It was due to their center back, Aiston Acosta, getting an early red card. They had to make a tactical substitution and they had to put in another center back. So essentially they put in another center back for Alan Sonora to try to hold on to an away draw, which at the time the game was 0-0. So not good for Alan that he was the one selected to leave the game due to the red card. And I mean, his season has not been very good for Independiente so far. Now let's quickly go through the CONCACAF Champions League and I'll wrap up this video and don't forget to smash the like button if you haven't already this far in the video. So the first game that we had this week for the CONCACAF Champions League, we had Pumas defeating Cruz Azul for the first leg 2-1. Now Cruz Azul, personally, I think they're the better side. If Pumas advances, MLS has a good chance of winning the trophy. Regardless, with that said, Liga Emekis are always the favorites against MLS because history goes that way. But you never know. Maybe this season is the, the day that MLS will end this curse. Which brings me to the other semifinals, which was a pretty damn good game. That was Seattle Sounders 3, New York City FC 1. And NYC FC is essentially the Manchester City of CONCACAF. So the Sounders going through, in my opinion, increases the MLS's odds of winning. I think they would have a better chance against Pumas or Cruz Azul than New York. Morris looked good in this game, but Gray did look bad defensively for the most part. However, I will say one thing. That Morris goal was one beautiful finish. But let's slow down on the hype. People are saying Morris is back. We need to see more. We saw in the U.S. Men's National Team camp that he didn't look good. As for the PK they gave the Sounders, many people asked me what I thought of it. And it looked like a soft call in my opinion. I, I personally would not give that a PK, but... It, there's also a case to be made that you could count it as a PK. The Sounders player was hit. To me, it was, eh, you know, I wouldn't really call it. Now, the Seattle Sounders do have to thank Thiago Martins, a former Palmeiras legend from our dark era where we were even relegated. He definitely was caught sleeping a few times and helped the Sounders through this match. The second leg for the CONCACAF Champions League will be played the following week. So essentially next week, this is being released on Friday. And we will do a live watch along for the Sounders versus the NYC FC, New York City FC. Sorry. Okay. So don't miss out on that live watch along Wednesday night. All right, everyone. That does it for this U.S. Men's National Team Abroad episode. We'll be back on Monday with the weekend recap, hopefully with better news. There wasn't that many good news this week or this midweek. I must say. Don't forget to smash the like button before you go. And don't forget, we will be doing a live watch along next week for the CONCACAF Champions League. And we will be releasing a video about the United States versus England and the United States versus Iran with two special guests to cover our rivals in the World Cup. I want to thank you all very much for watching and have a great day.